Hello guys and welcome to the second day of the SADPC. We're here with the division the the division one once again as we watch two new teams uh duking it out. It's going to be Infamous versus Infinity. Infamous, who you guys may have come to know, especially during the regional finals, a team that started off the last season decently and ended with a really high note. And Infinity, which is one of the teams that qualified from Division 2, that has previously kind of been in this threshold between Division 1, Division 2, up, down, up, down, and now is coming with a really strong squad with one of Infamous's old captains, Papita. Very exciting match, especially for Papita, as it's a bit of a grudge match for him, as he's going to be able to fight against the org that he was in for eight years, almost. Uh, to analyze this wonderful encounter, we have myself, Ava Plus, and joining me on this beautiful panel is Dota to Bowie and Lacoste. Bowie, nice to have you here again. Uh, how have you, you so have you been? I know you've been in Division 2, but now you get to uh, make the jump here on this panel. Dude, I'm very excited because, uh, yes, we do have the narrative of Papita that you mentioned, but we also have Michael now playing against his own team, right? He was playing True. for Infamous uh, before, the, uh, I guess, in Tour 1. I'm very excited to see how Infinity is going to fare because I think those guys were destroying Division 2 for a reason. I'm yes. not sure if they're up for the task. But uh, it's going to be exciting nonetheless. Yeah. Because you got to watch a lot of Infinity last, uh, sorry, last, a lot of Infamous, sorry, last season. Uh, infamous, and yes. Infinity, not so much. But, yeah. you know, when I was doing the research, uh, seeing uh, how the boys played, like, th this is a team. And as you said, like, they bounce between, uh, you know, they, they need to find their spot, whether they're Division mm -hmm. One or Division Two team, judging how they performed in the previous DPC tour. They seem to be too good for the lower division because they lost only one game, not even a full series. They went seven and zero. So I, I want to see them do good in this one. I want to see them how they're gonna perform against like top tier teams. Maybe you know, for a start, it would be better for the team if they played uh, against someone else. Like if they didn't play against Infamous or the Beast Coast, you know, maybe Hokori and maybe Balrogs, mm -hmm. uh, Lava. But uh, yeah, sometimes it is what it is, and uh, you gotta suck it up and uh, give your best. But we, yeah, uh, I what think... do you think when you look at the Inf Infinity roster? Do you find them to be a Division 1 team? Because a lot of people were surprised when they saw this roster being in Division 2 last season. I think that when we look at like the actual talent in the players, I think they were already, like uh, as Lacoste said, way too good for Division 2. I think they're even better now because I think Rises is mm. an upgrade oh, yeah. for, uh, for Parker. No questions asked. Really? And on top of that, they get Michael. Yeah, I, I really think so. I think Infamous, uh, even though they got like amazing results in the last DPC. I think it's very hard to argue that Oscar is an upgrade in regards to Sacred and Zlatin. He was a really good player. He like he always impressed me, but he's been out of the DPC tour for almost a year, right? I think it's like nine months since he played. So that's kind of a question mark for me. Yeah. Uh I want to ask about the Parker versus Rises thing, to be honest, because I, I wouldn't I don't know. It's interesting. Parker has been considered the rising star. He's the third he K3, as people are saying now, you know, because he's the third yeah. big carry. But uh, what? why do you think Rises is better? I think, no, like, uh, let me let me be frank here. I think Parker has a lot of potential, but he okay. is a rising star, as you said. So I, I still feel like he's figuring out uh, a lot of stuff. When I heard that SG actually got Rises, because there was this time where SG kicked arms because they did so poorly uh, in turn one. And uh, everyone, all of the teams were like, dude, how did SG got Rises? Like, this this is so unfair. We really want Rises. He was, like, literally one of the carries that were available that everyone wanted. So uh, I really feel yeah. like uh, even though he... Yeah, he's really good. That's, that's he, what he's I good. Say. And I watched yeah. him play because I've been covering uh, North America as well. Even mm -hmm. though Black and Yellow, they didn't do too hot in the upper division. Like, they started the season really good. Uh, I think Rises, uh, you know, like they, they played a lot of. Uh, a lot of games, uh, like a lot of their series went two and one, which, um, you know, shows mm -hmm. that they can take the game of uh, pretty much any single team. They've beaten EG as well. And I think Rises was the shining star in that one. Like being able to beat EG, you know, as a like black and yellow, I, I'm not going to say that they're like, you know, it wasn't a team. It looked more like a stack, <laughs> but so that means some some individual in the team needed to carry it hard. And I'd say it, it yeah. rises. And he's also. I think this meta suits him really well because he's very active as a carry player. So that means, mm. like, right now in meta, you 
Uh, mid lane tends to farm a little bit more. Warrior carry is a bit more active, so I think uh, that he's going to have a lot of success. Okay. Uh, I'm loving this uh, love for Infinity. Uh, an org that did really well in the close qualifiers, you might remember, but completely changed their roster now. This is pretty much, as uh, Bowie mentioned, infamous, <laughs> really. But at this point, if you guys don't know that every player in South America has been through infamous, then do you even know South America, right? <laughs> it's kind of hard not to have a grudge match against this org. Let's uh, let's mm -hmm. talk about the current infamous, though. Uh, you were you talked uh, briefly, Bowie, about their change in their offlaner. Can you enlighten me a bit more, though? Uh, obviously, in case you guys don't know, Oscar from Thunder Awaken, he got kicked from Thunder Awaken, and then they took Sacred from Infamous. Infamous not having no offlaner side to take Oscar. Balki was available, by the way. Just want to point that out, but they decided to take Oscar instead. And they made essentially a player swap. And you think that's then downgrade for them, Bowie. Why so? Uh I mean, there's if you're a team like Tender Awaken and you're kicking Oscar for for a player, you you must assume that uh you there's either more skill in that player or more commitment. And uh I do feel like Oscar Last season, he was probably one of the best offlaners in South America. But I mm -hmm. did feel like uh, maybe because the meta changed or maybe because uh, the way the structure on the team worked, he wasn't as impactful as I remember him to be. So uh, I do feel like Sacred, though, is probably like top two alongside Whisper, one of the best offlaners on SA right now. That guy is really good. Yeah, I, I, it's very weird to see, you know, one team just... Uh kicking a player the other organization picking it up and they're like well we're just <laughs> gonna swap the off lane pretty much i mean that yeah. that yeah. really doesn't happen in dota because if one team uh that was like doing really well doesn't think their off laner is good anymore and then like the other team well, well maybe we don't have options we'll just take your guy and uh, pray that he wasn't uh especially if you know that he's kicked right if he left on mm -hmm. his own you're like well, he thinks he's better and will take him. But if he is kicked, eh, then you're like questioning what the hell happened there. Why did they kick him? That's my point. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, the same thing with SG and uh, with uh, Parker and Rises, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. I, I will say that they, when the kick happened, they did make, or the players do, I, I don't think this is public information, but it's not necessarily private either, that the kick was more of a um, play style issue, right? A lot of the Thunder Awakened players were talking about how Oscar is very unique offlaner in the sense that he doesn't really carry the game ever. He is an offlaner that plays for the team. He's very sacrificial in that sense. Uh, very old style offlaner, honestly. And that's not mm -hmm. a style that they were really happy with. But what's interesting, and I like that Bowie mentions this, that Sacred is the opposite kind of offlaner, actually. He's a very predominant offlaner, very Legion Commander, Pango Heavy. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry from the offlane. And you completely swapped your play style. I'm, are, are you worried, Bowie, about how this might affect, affect Infamous as a whole, as a team, and the dynamic? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. They do have Excel, though. So if there's a captain that's supposed to make things work, I really trust yep. him to be able to pick things up and, and figure out a way for the team to work. But uh, I, I don't expect them to be playing the same level that they played at the end of the uh, of Tour 1 uh, right from the get-go. So I think there is a chance for Infinity to, to win. Okay, a lot of faith. I nice. mean, so I, I got to add, add to that because we've seen yesterday, uh, we've seen Balrog's Division yep. 2 team. Uh, that uh, you know got into division one playing against uh, the best south american team for a while uh, beast coast and they won game one pretty hard uh second game you know maybe decision making because i was casting the game and the uh, decision making about the Roche in the second game it would have been closer third game i think they should have won that game but also the Roche decision making is what cost them and we see that in other regions as well uh the cut was playing against the uh, eg you're like yeah. who the hell is cut i like, never heard of these guys you know it's a theme that uh, also like uh, same as infinity goes up and down between the seasons and they managed to take the game of EG as well. So I I think the same thing could potentially happen. Uh, Infinity at least taking a game of Infamous. The, like, it depends, like, how how strong their draft is. I, I feel like, you know, they, and also they have Rises, which we praised uh, for a little bit. And I think they should save his pick for last. I think uh, you got to give Rises, like, uh, a good chance, a good matchup, and then he's going to shine. Okay. I'm excited. I really want to see Rises. You guys have been talking him up so much that I... I, I mean, I've, I saw him a little bit when he was in Division 2, and he didn't impress me, but obviously in Division 2 and A, what, you know, it's it's not that difficult to kind of outshine as a as an individual player. And now against the top teams, if he still manages to impress, that's that's going to be very exciting. As the, the draft is, is beginning, guys, we're going to go there in a second. Uh, before we go, then, do do I get an agreement that you guys think Infinity can take this? Like, it's not impossible for you? You think the, the hunger is there, uh, Bowie, Lacoste? 
Yeah, for I sure. think so. Yeah. I would say oh. uh, 60 40 here for uh, Infamous. Ah, uh, yes, I missed those. I missed those random numbers. Yeah, just gonna, you <laughs> yes. know, throw in something out Ten there. And the remaining. first Dollar number is very team. random. They're like 37, <laughs> and then the the hardest part are like. 100 minus 37 and I'm, I'm doing the math on stream right now uh yeah i think it's more like uh, 25 75 i still wow. feel, you know, infamous after like changing okay. the players they're still a very strong team uh and i, I feel like they're hungry they want to prove something they've gotten good uh, amount of the dpc points in the previous one but i i can understand why they changed the players as well because they felt like you know we've beaten Beast Coast uh, during the DPC and in the regional finals the total score was zero and five and you're like well yes. if you want to compete with the big boys like we gotta change something up. Radiant team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and also is how the games went right I mean at least in my opinion they seemed outclassed in those games very yes. often like not they couldn't hold a candle to Beast Coast. Mind you Beast Coast is also in the serious mode as we say right so they were playing the best daughter of their life. As we get into the draft we're gonna see Infinity immediately with a Bane a Monkey King pick and the Weaver still present here for Infamous. Uh, this pick dropped off a little bit, uh, but Bowie, you were a big advocate of Weaver last season. Do you, do you still think the hero is strong right now? Especially as a first mean, pick. I mean, after the nerfs, I was like, I was sure that Weaver was done, but uh, I've been watching a lot of regions and the hero is still like super contested yeah. and I've seen the hero have decent success. Maybe still like, uh, you know, players still trying to uh, having trouble getting detached from uh, that meta, but it's still like decent. Definitely not as good. Though. It's good. Yeah, it's just been nerfed at the early levels. Like the axe is not as strong anymore, but there's uh, different ways to build a hero. You don't necessarily need to have it. And the one thing you need to be careful about is being aggressive at the early levels while your Shikuchi is still level one, because now you have three extra seconds on it. So it's like 15 seconds. You can't be as aggressive. And also the bugs are not as strong. You need three hits instead of four now, which was a necessary change. Weaver was just a bit uh, too strong. And Queen of Pain, this hero also has fallen off in other regions as well. The hero got uh, directly nerfed and also indirectly. A lot of these numbers uh, got uh, lower down, whether it's like the uh, mana cost increase, whether the damage on the shard, mm -hmm. or like the indirect ones, like the item that she was always buying, Kaya and Sanj. So a lot of these things, you know, tend to add up. It's still a good hero. I just don't feel the Queen of Pain is like, you know, what was in the previous patch. We can first face Queen of Pain and not give a damn about what they're going to pick because she, does, she doesn't have bad matchups. Uh, right now they're protecting the Queen of Pain, uh, banning out the Kanka, banning out the Invoker. Uh, these two heroes tend to do well. Alina is one of the options as well that they can ban out. Yes. Some people have been experimenting I... with Lina. As Stevie told us yesterday that his team was doing, was dominating uh, in scrims with Alina particularly, and I think he's a very strong hero. Yeah. I, sorry, Bowie, I talk a lot, but I just want to, you know, mention, mention <laughs> that because he said, you know, the, I believe Stevie said uh, position four Lina is, yeah. I'll, I'm going to quote him, the strongest position four right now. I don't think I've seen it. I don't think I've seen it in high level yeah. pubs. Mostly seen it on the mid lane. There is some potential. I want to see it in a real yeah, game, and uh, maybe, maybe in so, this one. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some potential because of the flex, but I agree with you. I, I, I look at this Weaver Queen of Pain and I get, you know, two months ago vibes, which, uh, I mean, if Infamous is good enough, they might be able to pull the win uh, just by, you know, picking what's comfort for them. But it yeah. doesn't strike mm -hmm. me as, uh, you know, we are totally in sync with what's good right now. Five seconds uh, okay. So, yeah, they do bend the Tiny and the Beastmaster here. They're afraid. Oh, they, they don't have a lot of wave clear for uh, oh. for the zoo, which I don't mind. Can I ask, though, what about the, the bait Monkey King? Did that scream like do better to you? Because they're also, they were also very popular last Yeah, they, they also old school. It's still good. Uh, yeah, betting out I... the vision heroes, uh, pretty much uh, this Beastmaster that could potentially ruin uh, Monkey King. This is also a flex pick, most likely going to be position four. Ten Monkey seconds. sitting on the trees, like there was one game in EU where Monkey King like legitimately didn't join a fight. Like when we saw the heat map, it was all in the trees. That's what he was doing pretty much the whole game. They lost the game in the end, but uh, it is okay. what it is. Is that the one that JJ posted on Twitter where he's like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it, it might have I been saw that, that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. The, the MP here, uh, Bowie, but my, my little Papita expert, do you think that's going to be the offlane 
Papita NP that he used to play very often before. Yeah, it's very possible. Uh, there, there are players that run position uh, four NP, but I think it really fell out of favor. You do see NP uh -huh. mid though. I think it's a really good match for Squawk just because she's a ranked yeah. hero. Uh, so this yeah. might be a flex that they can uh, exercise here. Uh, I don't remember PP playing it. I think there were other mid players in SA that really loved it. But you know, he's a really talented player, so he can definitely do no, it. No, PP does. Wants to. He does. He, okay. he has played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're not you're you're right on the mark there. It could be. It could be. But Papita is also a good player. I don't think this team plays it as a support though, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Do you think Papita decided to change his nickname because he's playing with PP, so that uh, we don't confuse the MPP and pa Pipita, Papita? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I actually have the real reason why Papita changed his name, and it's because he want, for a while he wanted to become a lifestyle guru, and I, I kid you not. Uh, and so he posted videos on Instagram about like meditation and stuff, and he thought if he's called, you know, small potato chip people would not take him seriously so he changed his name to his real name Liano. ha huh. okay yeah he made he helped one of the spanish casters lose 20 kilograms over the course of like a year or so it's really impressive yeah, he's Five healthy now thanks to him remaining. i mean that's great good, good stories uh, you always have these like behind the, the scene stories which i really do enjoy uh centaur snapfire uh, this seems to be I mean, they can swap things around. Uh, Centaur Weaver, Strongs, uh, but I think they're going to land Centaur and the Snapfire to be able to land a stun a bit easier. Snapfire as a support, heavily nerfed as well. So we can see that Infamous is, I'd say, playing all the heroes that got nerfed, which I'm not a big fan of. Also, like Centaur, not too many. I I've seen Centaur like just fall off so quickly if he doesn't have a good laning stage and uh, he also didn't receive like any major buffs like some of the numbers got uh, taken down <laughs> on the Aghanim Scepter he does have a leash mechanic but like it it's not the reason why we're picking this hero it's uh, <laughs> pretty much about the laning stage and being able to tank up uh, uh, their damage output right now on infinity is a bit limited I would say they don't have any kind of team fight everything they got is single targeted so a bit worried. Yeah, I do hope they play this NP middle and actually get uh, you know a tide hunter or a hero that can actually uh, either get give them more control or damage because it feel their team fight looks really wonky with the way that uh, like you, you do have a lot of I guess mobility with the monkey king in the trees and the nature profit TP, but they they lack a lot of lockdown, uh, especially against uh -huh. mobile heroes like Weaver, Cop, and Center OT. I mean, Templar Assassin and Nature's Prophet, very good heroes at taking Roche and also putting the pressure out on the map. But uh, I feel like they need something. You mentioned the, the the Tide Hunter. It could be good. They have like no real heroes that Tide Hunter is afraid of on the side of Infamous. Like that means you're gonna have a guaranteed ravage in a fight. They can't just burst him down with a hood. So that's a good pickup. Uh, looking through their heroes, like they also had like one game of Enigma. It's still like a decent enigma game if they want to go with that put a little bit more pressure on the lanes and allow monkey king to just to roam around because they're like they could easily show with their heroes having monkey from the trees nature's prophet uh, which hmm. most likely is going to be core but they can also shift things around now because they see the matchup it's against the terror blade nature's prophet does well and also like if this is a position five weaver plus a terror blade even snapfire uh offlane nature's prophet seems really good Remaining. Then what would you like for the mid to fix up some of the uh, catch issues here? Uh, I think uh, you can go for like either puck if you want to get a bit more control, or I okay. can get a get a get a tide hunter and just play it on the off lane. I think uh, that's very doable. But uh, yeah, these teams they do have like their own style of dota something that they think it's really good not necessarily mm -hmm. like what top teams would pick so i'm just wondering like how they're going to utilize this i don't think this like terror blade it's good against matchup against the Templar assassin if it's a core np once he gets the scotty timing and uh, this terror blade is going to be the king of the game so mm -hmm. i they, they need like something that's going to say gotcha but uh i'm a bit worried i like what infamous got yeah, okay. I think Darks here could, could be really good, but he did ban it uh, to protect the Terror Blade there. Oh! Underlord? Okay. Ah, this hero just straight up loses. Every single time I see him, this hero <laughs> looks good. It really looks good on paper. Like, wow, we're gonna have 
you know, Road of Athos into Pit against Queen of Pain, Weaver, uh, TB Illusions. This hero is just straight up garbage. Like, Underlord plus Bounty Hunter are the two worst heroes in the game, period. Wow. Putting him at the okay. level of Bounty. What does Slark rank there, Lacoste? Do you think Slark is uh, above Slark's, him? Uh, you know, up, down there, not up there. He's really down there, <laughs> okay. you know, maybe a bit more playable than some of these heroes. But uh, yeah, Underlord just uh, just too bad. It doesn't do anything. Like, I, I feel this last pick, it needs to be something that's going to be like, okay, this hero counters one at least hero, maybe two. Didn't happen, in my opinion. I feel like uh, Infamous has this one. This, this seems like a huge outdraft for me. Okay. Bowie? Yeah, I I don't know. Like the first four infamous picks, they didn't really scream any confidence to me. But when you look at this Terror Blade and what Infinity has, uh, I agree. I think this is a game that either Infinity stomps, like that it is a good matchup in the lane for Underlord versus Terror Blade. So if they can snowball that lane and uh, somehow win this game in 30 minutes, they might have a chance. But if this drags along, I agree with Lacoste. I think it's just uh, super hard for Infinity to do anything. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Well, uh, the panel is not confident in Infinity, but is Infinity confident in themselves? That's what matters. As we go over to the game number one between Infamous and Infinity, with your casters, Ava Plus, and Seek and Strike. Ah. Thank goodness. Can't... Mike, get that host off the screen and welcome here, Avo Plus. It's good to see you, mate. Uh, we've, we've got what the, the battle of the prefixes here, don't we? Infinity versus Infamous straight away, uh, with of course a couple of fun roster swaps like you guys. I heard you discussing during, excuse me, during the panel. Uh, I don't know, man. Are you are you as as a, a downer on the the Underlord hero as Lacoste seems to be? We've seen a couple ah, of it, uh, of course, in NA, right? So, yeah, <laughs> right. Right, <laughs> NA, the region, is a Twilight Zone of Dota, right? Okay, I yeah. see why yeah. anything can happen. I, I agree. I mean, you know, host doesn't have any opinions, but cast off does. And uh, I get to say that when we watched the Open Qualifiers, he looked good, like both in NA and Western Europe. They used it a little bit in Western Europe as well, remember? And he had okay uh, time. It was mostly the idea of, like... Uh, like, he, he was playing like Io, essentially, right? He would go in with a Fiend's Gate, join into ganks that weren't supposed to be. That said, you're right about the fact, or, or Lacoste is right about the fact that uh, I don't think the hero is very strong because I think against a more coordinated team, making those kind of ganks we saw in the open qualifiers is not as easy. Or it's just not as successful, right? Because teams are prepared for that. They always have Underlord in mind. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's true. That's I, I kind of have to agree with them. And I guess you're kind of doubling down. It feels a little bit like going double invis, right? Because you have an NP, you have a TA with the new Ag Scepter. I think everyone's adjusted to that play style. And you have this Fiend's Gate. Like, we get it. You're going to be all over the map, you know? It, it's, it, it does seem like a little bit too all-in on this one kind of strategy. Even, like, with Monkey King, you expect him to be all over the map as well, especially as support. It does feel like that they've really gone all in on this aspect that they could be anywhere at any time. And I feel like at some stage you, you kind of lose the natural advantage that brings you when almost every single hero can do that. Yep. <laughs> uh, we'll see how the lanes go as well because I, I do agree with Bowie that uh, I think a big reason why you picked this hero or the re reason in general Infinity's draft is a bit of a snowball draft, right? So if that works out for them and they can snowball off that, you do have a really good time just kind of crushing everything you see and, and, and running over people. And if they can't really accomplish that, I do agree that TB just kind of gets online and this game is, is pretty much over. I, I don't really know what you do with TB once once he gets online. Like, can, can NP maybe deviate into a build that includes a lot more mixed damage? I'm not sure. You know, with an MKB maybe and like, um, MKB, like a Mjolnir Maelstrom, MKB or something. Malona. Yeah, th those sound a little bit more realistic to me. I agree because Bane, Monkey King, not going to do a whole lot there to even help you out in the early levels. Um, yeah. You know, I guess it's it's easier for Bane compared to most illusion heroes for a TB to obviously scout the real one because there's a built-in yeah. difference compared to most heroes where you just kind of have to get good. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not looking too easy. Uh, I guess while we're paused, I can get in my two cents about this little off lane change, oh. right? Be with, with <laughs> they heard guy. that and they immediately reconnect. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, no, he's not a panelist. He's a caster. He's not supposed to do research. I What I thought was fascinating was, of course, that Oscar has actually played Dota with Slotting before, which isn't that surprising considering they're 
you know, Bo's been playing since 2016, 2017. This rise is top lane in some trouble. Doesn't have the refraction charges here and is going to drop for first blood. Slavin is uh, going to pick that one up on the range snap fire. Nice, nice teamwork between the two, which is uh, yeah. going to make the points I'm about to make perhaps a bit moot uh, or maybe uh, already you know, kind of decide which way this is going. Uh, but good, good. Muscat and Matthew, previously his laning partner, uh, three, four on Thunder Awakening, were I think one of the most experienced off lanes in, in SA. Of course, I think Beast Coast uh, had a, quite the experienced off lane duo as well. Uh, but they so had in terms played of almost being like, together, right? Yes, For in terms of being together. Yeah, they had played something like 180 games together. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whereas Oscar and Salian are just around 20% of that so far, just 38 games yes. about. Uh, and half of those come from the recent uh, BTS Pro Series, right? So they're right. still, of course, learning how to play together. This is going to take a little bit of time for them to get used to. I think that's what Bowie was hinting at when he said Infinity still have a chance. I definitely agree they do. Uh, but given the amount of ex experience that these two guys have together already, uh, I think we can see that they're already a little bit stronger than perhaps even Infinity is ready for us. They go on to Rises yep. yet again. Rises, yeah, in trouble once again. I think he might. No, he has a refraction. The refraction's taken off, but they realize they can't go further. I honestly do think that uh, Oscar's style is a relatively easy style to lane with, though. I mean, Matthew is a god, so you know, Matthew himself yeah. is, just does well. But he reminds me a lot of, if we can quote another region, and that's allowed, uh, KYXY and SEA. He's this guy that just like runs at you. His goal is to make your lane miserable. And you're like, wait, Oscar, you're not getting any lasses. He's like, what do I need lasses for? I'm just a glorified <laughs> support, bro. And that's what True. he does. He, he just runs at them the whole game. All of a sudden, you realize halfway through the game, oh, my, his carry and his off and his mid laner are uber farmed and we've been concentrating on this idiot running around for a while and that play style uh -huh. i think for the lane makes it easier uh compared to for example whisper where Schofield is constantly uh, stuck between do i help mid or do i help off lane, right because they want whisper yep. to scale better yep and, and speaking of lanes and, and the general play style, Oscar to me was always one of the off laners that was super, super willing to, to rotate mid like early on, uh, especially yeah. during fights. That's kind of Thunder Awakening as a whole. They would always bring like five heroes to the first rotation, uh, uh, you know, on the catapult or whatever mid lane. Um, <laughs> this lane, uh, this time around on the Centaur as they go top lane onto the Bane, but lack the damage to all to do with the kill. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do to stop this, uh, stop this NP early on. Uh, for now, actually, Alone's doing a pretty good job of it himself, just kind of at least having a little bit of a lead or a, an edge in terms of CS. But, you know, it's it's a mid lane or it's a laning a core NP. He's going to get CS in no matter what. High base damage, really good attacks. Uh, he's yep. got, of course, the Treants to use. So I wonder how they're going to even look to stop this, uh, this Nature's Prophet as soon as he gets online. Because uh, I think they have kind of similar issues to the ones that Infinity will have versus this TB. Except, of course, NP's online a lot sooner. And not as scary, granted, but still, he's going to be he's gonna be hitting hard. What's the no, solution you're, to that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, you make a good point. Uh, the MP in the in SA region, the mid-MP has been a staple of this region for a while. PP has been playing it, but the first guy to actually do it consistently was Faker. It was also on Infamous, by the way, back then. Mm. And they would just dominate with this hero but because of what you say. Good laning, usually was up against a, a good matchup as well, like Queen of Pain, for example, which is definitely a good matchup for MP. And then you just kind of snowball off there. You essentially just need to deep push really effectively. I think heroes like Weaver really uh, deal with MP nicely because mm. you can't put that much pressure early. And Point. I think the most important part is actually the good core to core. When NP was dominating back in, I think it was the time that were the ESL one LA was going on, right? That was the time when he became kind of popular as affliction. Now he's fine. Uh, during that time, the MP was always matched up against these bad core to core matchups, or these these good core to core matchups. Like it was MP made against like a Dusa carry, and we realized, oh, MP destroys Dusa carry actually, surprisingly enough. But Terrorblade, for example, is one of the answers they came up with him, and that's when Terra once he got Scotty, it became difficult for MP to play his game, and it became much more of a timed draft than what we're used to. So it's yeah, just about and, that. Uh... I do think the carry is important for this for mainly. I guess it's not too surprising when you look at the cores of of Infamous. But uh, Slavin is going for the Scatter Blast build as well here on the Snapfire. So that's going to assist in the wave clear dramatically, right? You've already brought up Sakuchi. That's a, that's an excellent aspect. Oscott as well at some stage is going to be a little bit too tanky for this NP as even now Affliction is ready to go mid lane. He's been scouted though and actually hit uh, by the Wrath of Nature. Radiant PP is also going to bring in some reinforcements from the top lane. It's only a Bane though compared to the Snapfire and the Weaver. I'm showing now in the lane is they're making oh a very God. aggressive push with the first wagon and even with a sonic wave now cookie scatter blast not wow. even needed here as alone simply picks up the kill and i think this bane is going to be a free plus one 
And as he gets off a brain sap, a nightmare, but will be killed off. The rotation's from Michael. He's going to jump aboard the feed train as well. But no, they're not going to die for him. Yeah, this feed train does not allow monkeys on the train. No pets allowed. <laughs> but yeah, that that was another play that you can make against MP. We didn't see this too much uh, back back in the day, but now I think it's a really good idea. He's vulnerable to being uh, dived, and you don't really have the best heroes to cover that. Bane is okay. Monkey King needs to be in position before the dive happens. He can't really TP and save you. So Infamous is playing overly aggressive, and that way MP doesn't have time to farm. Queen of Pain is suited to this playstyle as well. And I do think the Queen of Pain versus NP matchup is one of those matchups where if you play aggressively, it becomes a much easier matchup for the Queen of Pain than if you try to just farm the lane. Yeah, and that was pretty clutch as well, because not only, of course, do you relieve some pressure mid lane, um, but I suppose for Infinity in exchange for that, you, you relieve a little bit of pressure for Rises, who was uh, not exactly struggling, shall we say, but definitely was taking... Excuse me, a bit of a bruising from this pretty strong offlane, granted. Uh, is now going to be able to kind of recover that and take things a bit easier. And of course, it's the TA, so she can go into the jungle basically at any stage. This means that Infinity are going to go ahead and give this small stack to PP then. It's scouted by Affliction. It's just going to stick around and steal some experience and attempt to actually steal a couple of the creeps, but will not be able to do so. Still, though, stealing some experience while the Quap farms herself a little bit the stack. Okay. For now, because this mid lane in a, is a slightly going towards the wave alone, I think if this is very calm about what they can do right now, Affliction is just going to continue creating space. Axel does this. If he dies, it's okay. His team is used to it. If he doesn't die, wow. What a play, right? So, I got a warrior, go. guys. Guys, I can okay. die now. I've covered my own gold loss. Uh, as they're going to push mid instead. Infinity has pretty poor lane pushing until Monkey King gets levels, honestly. They don't really they can't really shove this lane easily. Like Bane is struggling to hit this five creeps, and Bane's gonna die. Oh, nightmare. Yeah. Stop the cookie, and they miss the scatterbuff as well. They still kill him regardless. Oh, oh now being slowed, Mariana comes in. They have the pit of malice. Hey. But alone has the stampede, so he's gonna be perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah, very nicely done. Yeah, I was gonna say Mariano's pretty good at it, right? He's got three points in firestorm, at least at wave clear. Uh, and he was assisted by the push, what, what Underlord truly lacks, the tower damage, right, by PP. So they do complement each other pretty nicely in that role. Uh, it, was, it was good that, uh, well, it's good for Infinity, of course, that Infamous don't even get the kill onto the Bane mid lane, uh, as now they have got to walk away with a tower, and they're in no position top lane either in their own off lane uh, to really go for too early of a tower siege. Uh, Centaur, he's pretty good at it now, especially with the Vanguard and level 3 Retaliate. He can push the tower for sure, uh, mm. but he is going to struggle now. That's, uh, of course, given how global this Infinity team is. And case in point, Michael's already here, top lane. He yep. would have been scouted by that one as Affliction pings him out. I think this is the Oscar trap, though. He hits his early levels as an offlaner, and he's, like, ready to fight, right? And you either jump up around him, and like they're doing right now, and it's impossible to really fight them, because Centaur's the strongest hero right now in the game, right? Or, alternatively, you waste too much time trying to kill him or annoy him, and you don't really accomplish much, right? It's a bit like a Beast Coast uh, Schofield trap. Like, wherever Schofield is going is wherever you shouldn't be going. Michael, being forced away by the Kisses. Affliction oh. stunned up as well. They've got him in the trees, but the Dark Rift is here, meaning that there will be heroes eventually. Michael looking to TP away as Oscar doesn't get him, but Michael does. Or sorry, Affliction does. Oof, that Fiend's he hit, though. He died in the trees. I don't know if you saw him. Uh, it did, but what did he die too? Did he die to a swarm? He, uh, proc? Yeah, yeah, it was the... Urn. He did the urn proc, yeah. He, they hit, they yeah, almost hit him with a stomp, but I think that missed. But anyway, that doesn't really... Like, the weird thing there is that they, or not weird, but the bad thing there is they wasted the Fiend's Gate, right? And all of a sudden you don't have this ability, this global ability anymore. And now you're not so scary as a squad. And usually with Fiend's Gate, you kind of have to commit to that ulti, I think. Like, yeah, it, it gives you the appearance that you don't have to commit, but the success we saw in open qualifiers was when they just used it as relocate, essentially, right? Yep. So, now that it's wasted, I feel like Infamous has a lot of freedom in this game. That's true. I think for right now, Infinity aren't really too keen on taking fights too far from their objecti objectives anyway, to which you could just TP. Means Gate is faster, you're right. Uh, and maybe even bottom actually would be useful if you want to do assist PP here. Uh, but PP <laughs> almost has his own solo kill item. And he's going to have this uh, Orchid online Orchid. very quickly. Although Alone and Affliction are going to look to put an end to that, but lack the damage, especially not wanting to commit the Sonic Wave. Uh, they're not going to get that kill. I want to congratulate. Think I want to congratulate both of us there for not calling it a shadow blade there. So good job, Richie. Yes, yes, we've done it. I've I've learned. <laughs> yeah, I the know. item I never builds. I've learned its recipe. 
Okay, feed script down the bottom lane. They catch alone. PP's here as well. They have Orchid, so alone most likely dead here. They don't even need oh, yeah. the Orchid there. That's the game they were expecting. There's PP coming online. Yeah, save it for Affliction as they will go hunting for him as well. Michael though, does not have the Boundless Strike nor the Primal Spring, uh, so really no damage that he could do there, only to watch the Weaver TP away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, felt, that felt a little bit bad there for, um, for the Monkey King. Really frustrated as ah. you're in the trees, but you're stuck, you can't okay, get down. Though. You, you used uh, Boundless Strike to set up for a Fiend's Grip onto a Quap. That feels amazing. <laughs> no, right, it's true. No, no, the play is overall good. I'm just saying, uh, personally, yeah. I can't imagine, like, I feel like if you play a monkey hero and you can't get off from a tree, it feels like you've just betrayed your species, honestly. What is this cooldown to walk off a tree? Why? <laughs> just just saying. That, that that's my own personal interpretation. As, uh, Fair enough. <laughs> thank you for that. SPP is going to be building yeah. boots now, finally. And after that, we'll see what next item you go for next. Uh, alone. They yeah, have pit. So I think Alone might actually die with the Orchid Burn. Wow. Yes. Soul Burn. Nice job. Okay. Now they, they could easily defend top lane as well, because without the Queen of Pain, you are severely lacking in your damage. You do have Kisses and Stomp uh, to set up for it, but that's kind of about it. In fact, they haven't really even mm -hmm. managed to boot Rises into, like, really into the jungle. I don't think he's yet been into the triangle. Perhaps now his team's like, what are you doing here, Rise? Let's go, go farm in the triangle. Uh, but it seems like he's still been taking some pretty efficient farm overall. Hasn't really mm -hmm. fallen too far behind his cores, which is kind of surprising uh, given that, uh, well, how fast his cores on this team especially farm. Yep. No stacks of Ancient Jeff for him, or only a single stack, which is not that impressive, but it, it's okay. And right, once Ryzen gets to hit his timing, that's when Infinity has to dominate the game, right? which probably was talked about at the end. Like, they can't snowball pre-30, you have know, TA and MP timing is really strong, and essentially it's just a, a race against time to see who can, like, if you can beat terribly before he gets his own items, right? Where yeah. I think Infamous should try to change game plan, they're very aggressive until now, and now maybe avoiding fights, cutting lanes, or only taking pick-offs might be the better idea rather than fighting the enemy team head on. And uh, well, speaking of fighting, I think Infamous are looking to force something top lane against Infinity. They've got four heroes here. TB is farming his way up towards top. Uh, just check in quickly on TB. He's very quickly closing in already on this full Manta style. Uh, almost, he just needs now the uh, ultimate orb and he'll have it up as they will go now top lane onto Mariano. He's gonna try and dark rift out, but they're gonna stun him out of it. Pulled out and killed. Making sure that that portal is going absolutely nowhere. And with this, the tower falls in the top lane. So Infamous at least take some objectives, but you're right that uh, as a result, they trade for the mid lane. So Infinity is not too unhappy about this as they they really want to open up the map. I do question if Infinity cares enough, or they care at all, honestly, about their objectives dying. Because you have to play this so fast that as long as you're opening up the equal side of the map and the opponent, trades are always beneficial to you, right? You're not there to defend Great. your space. The TA already has enough farm for her to like find farm elsewhere. So you're, you're okay with this. True. Yeah, I, I think they, they probably still defend like mid tier one, of course, because you want to protect that TA space. For now, you're not quite at that timing, but but overall, I definitely agree with you. I mean, that's that's the safe lane tier one tower. You committed four heroes up there, and, and maybe even the TV, right? He was who yeah. was farming in the area. We're totally cool with that, I think, is what Infinity are saying. In fact, now True. they're going to smoke, expecting someone to be farming here in this jungle. I would be correct, but the, the farm's already been taken, and pig pulling away is Oscar. <laughs> Really, really uh, claiming that such bad uh, double voice now. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Guys, if you ever think uh, that I am not casting with Sunset, think again. Think <laughs> well, your again. Your podcast with Fly, by the way, was amazing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Fly, <laughs> one of really my favorite good. Dota 2 players. What can I say? That's that's an actually true thing, I think. Uh, he's it it, it is unironically true. Yeah, yeah, he's it's a very, very nice guy. Um, what do you know now? Like he might be stuck. He only has Yul, so not really much to tank this. And with Kisses, he could be in trouble, but there's the Yul's, at least preventing some of the damage. Swarmer's still on him. Mariano with the Infused Raindrop survives. Rip. And in fact, it's Oscar who's stuck, thanks to the Grip, and the Monkey Statues are hitting him. Mariano will die to the Illusion. No. He's stuck there, just wants to go to the high ground. That's fine, that's fine. We're good. They don't have enough poke and prod yeah. to actually commit to Mariano, and Mariano surviving is impressive there. As they continue going for Affliction next, Michael has the Boundless Strike yet, DP as well with the Orchid, they hit him with the Nightmare, but here comes the rest Bone of the Sonic Wave now. Oh, with the Sonic Wave, they're in perfect position for it. The Cookie, the Tonic Wave doesn't want to waste it just yet because Prada is an easy kill, and they're going to settle it with auto attacks instead as Mariano. Next target, Mariano thinking, alone, you want to fight against me as Yol still. Sonic Wave to force him back, alone is capable of retreating as Mariano does not want to push this any further. Hmm, 
Okay, that was a very interesting fight. I'm surprised that infam uh, infamous part of me kind of roll up with everyone there, including the TB uh, who pops the uh, metamorphosis. I, I feel like if you had waited just those 10 additional seconds, you use Sonic Wave easily pick up the kill onto Mariana. You smell it, still just get it now, to be honest. The old Scepter very unlikely to save him here. It just allows Oscar to set up onto the opposite side and picks up the kill with the double edge alone. ED Rune active was trying to find him more, but again, given how mobile his team is, you lose vision of them for two seconds. They're on the opposite side of the map already. <laughs> that, that was an odd play by Mariano, to be honest. Like, you, you went there only with your supports. Even though your lane is technically safe, you have a couple of wards. Like, what, what were you going to accomplish there, right, by staying? You're not going to push the objective. You're only, like, kind of farming a bit more. But and you're okay. you're kind of in your Roche timing as well already, aren't you? Like, Ryzes has uh, Nesso. You, you, you have Nature's Prophet. Like, the, your, your death there basically just delays your team taking this first Aegis, which slows down your game. And like Panel was talking about, you don't have a late game solution nope. to this TV, at least not one that involves copious amounts of gold and, and items. And yeah, PP just realized, guys, if I go more physical damage, I will never hurt this TV again. He hit him like three times and dealt, I think, like 100 damage. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was so pathetic. And, and he's still not going to be doing any damage anytime soon. Sure, you're going to have this BKB, which is going to allow you to TP out in the face of enemies. Like, that's that's a very strong item, unironically, I say that. Uh, but that's not going to help your damage output whatsoever versus TP. Yep. He's going to shrug off that bonus, what, 16 damage? Mm -hmm. Very easily with all that armor. But Roshan is not going to be able to shrug off all about all of this damage. It's, it's a devastating oh, amount of help damage. It. Yeah, they're, they're going to help it. Not enough minus armor? Here, have Weaver. Oh, oh, alone. Lincoln. He actually goes in. Boundless strike alone. Oh. Yeah, the fiend script catches yes. him. Alone. Yes, he is. Th that's that's a good tip. That th yeah, yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, <laughs> that was extremely bold of him. Uh, extremely yes. bold, which was just most unfortunate because he did have Yule Scepter on the way. Would not have saved him from fiend's grip, of course. Uh, but no. perhaps would have bought him a little bit of time because he just eats everything there. Orchid, fiend's grip, and I, I suppose really that's about all he's got room for. He dies mm -hmm. after that. Yeah, I mean, the feed score wasn't even completely necessary. Any stun would have done there, right? But obviously, yeah. just secure the kill against the Queen of Pain. Definitely a necessity. I don't know, that, that was a, just a funny play. I think Alone laughed at himself for doing that. I, just, just because of the vibe I get him from the interviews, he's the kind of guy that does it. He's like, oh, guys, I'm so stupid. And then just uh, chuckles <laughs> yeah. it off. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. He goes, oh, guys, I tried to steal the ages. They got me. Like, yeah, we, we know. Alone. screaming in his ear. The, the mute, accent's already muted on the Discord. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're going to take a tier towards the result, this means outposts. And for now, the strategy is working. TP is still not online, so they're not playing too hard oh. with him. And what they're Why doing is TP? just ignoring him. Dying. He just decided to, to fight here. Because, of course, he oh. can Fiend's Gate his team in. Granted, it's a tier one, so his team could just TP. But without Fiend's grip, I don't think they really have the catch they need to, to really force a fight. So Infinity or sorry, inf yeah. Infamous, part of me, are just going to walk away from this one. Yeah, but both teams being called inf actually infamous on their Instagram like a year ago, right? Uh, they they posted this meme which was very good by the way. Uh, it, you know the what was the the cartoon that's become very popular or the, the animation the superhero? He starts in yellow, Mr. Impossible or the Impossible or something like that. Wait, and there's this meme of this guy. There's this meme of this like uh, the superhero beating someone and like he's they're, they're like against a rock and they're like, who do you think you are? Right? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. You've seen yes, that meme. The, H and the so they, HBO they, Go they, one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they posted that Which with uh, Infinity when they beat them. I'm like, who do you think? Who do you, what do you think these letters mean? And then they put Infinity's <laughs> letters and they put Infamous below. And it's like obviously inf refers to inf Infamous. And because oh, yeah. of that meme, Infinity actually rebranded. And now their English name is Infinity, not Inf, because it used to be Inf. <laughs> That's, ah, really that's pretty. You know what? That yeah, would have been even ball. more confusing, especially when they swap a couple of players in between seasons, you know? Yeah, if I see Inf Papito or Inf Mariano, I genuinely cannot tell what team he's from. <laughs> what year is this? Especially when I see him die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially, especially if there's an NP in the game. I caught Slavin here, but... Oh, actually, Force. great Forged oh. out. Okay, that cookie Force. was not so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good Force. You, you know what they it. say, the sequel is always worse than the original, right? So... <laughs> it's true. Oscar. Uh, okay. They yeah, have a fiend skip here, eight. so I, it's just a matter of, do they want to kill him? I think the answer is yes. And actually, they're not even going to waste so many resources. Oscar tries to use oh, the stampede, they're to like, the okay. he's trying to take the gate. <laughs> <laughs> he did it! Oscar, you cheeky <laughs> bastard. What a play. <laughs> that was pretty funny. He forced the fiend script as a result, honestly, so that's the best he yeah. can do there. Kudos yeah, to you, Oscar. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's, uh, that counts as a channel, I believe, so you can't silence it. You can't orchid that. Um, which is oh, hilarious. Yeah. 
Uh, I suppose you're right. I actually haven't seen yeah. it because I've never seen an enemy take a fiend's gate. Uh, but that's I've, that's interesting. Yeah, we've seen it like once in like kind of a ha ha he he kind of way. But like, yeah, this was a genuine. I'm going to run away. That was pretty funny. I also like how PP just shows up right next to the fiend's gate. He's like, I'm not taking that garbage. I'm MP. <laughs> Better than that. Right. He's like uh, the, the the rich man is watching the poor people take the metro, and he's like, oh, yeah. oh, you think I'm going to take the filthy subway? I have my own yeah. private jet. And again, just to oh, hold that thought, I think they've caught someone here. Indeed, they have. It's just the Monkey King. They've cut down his tree, and he does actually dodge uh, the Wrath of Nature damage <laughs> using the Wu Wow, the mischief, and he's going to Yule Scepter uh, over the Sonic Wave. He's going to die anyway, but that's a lot of commitment onto him. They didn't manage to snipe the Aegis, though, in case it's coming down onto Rise. There's just no support for him here whatsoever, so TB eats him alive. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a missed call there, I would say, um, because Monkey King, he's doing that to waste time. There's no way he survives that. And despite his good evasions, he avoided Sonic Wave, which, again, is really impressive. Yeah. But that aside, it's like, why, like, are you going to turn? It seemed like they were going to turn because Bane was going with them as well. So it was Prada and, and uh, Ryzen both going. And I think towards the end, they realized that was not the best play, but Ryzen didn't correct in time. I don't, I don't think your carry should be leading those kind of plays, right? Because if you correct that play in time, which I think was the right call, whoever made that call to, like, go back, the carry's going to die because he's leading. So... Yeah, a bit of a difficult, a bit of a miscommunication there, but it's okay. Not that big a deal. Yep. They can recover now with PP anyway, because he can also be a win condition. They can still recover. It's uh, just kind of a shame. I, I don't think this TIA on our itemizations is not... Well, it's Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger's up. Uh, okay, so never mind. I take that back. Once this BKB is up, I, I think you're kind of starting to approach the window. Maybe by then it would be very nice to have your second Aegis up, oh, as there's going to be a nice snipe here. Onto alone, and in the top lane, they catch him from the trees with the grip. Yule Scepter is here, but Mariano can easily catch him with the Pit of Malice. So alone is going nowhere. We'll be directly back to the fountain. And PP is going to be going for the brute force build, by the way. Now that I've noticed, uh, with the salt caress. So if you get enough mm. sources of minus armor, maybe you can pierce through TVs. Okay, that's bold, right? Because because what with the highest int gain or sorry, edgy gain in the game or something like mm -hmm. that on this guy, uh, highest mm -hmm. base armor. It's highest base armor. Yeah, I I think you might be right about the edgy gain. I'm not sure about that one. I don't, I don't. I know strength gain off the top of my head. I don't. I don't know why I've memorized that one. Affliction is going to be caught here as well. Not too big of a deal, but uh, no yeah, just another kill to the pockets of infinity. You memorized that one because when they took Centaur off that podium, it was the most yeah. egregious change Ice Frog ever made, and it essentially destabilized Dota forever. It did, yes. Now, Primal Beast is Disgusting. Uh, nice hero. How cause does a Primal Beast gain more strength than a Centaur? If the Centaur is a humanoid, hence he can go to the gym. Primal Beast can't. So, I uh, can't. I don't know. You know what? He's, he's got those primordial gains. He's, he's on a paleo <laughs> diet, and let me tell you. <laughs> Yes, no, <laughs> no grains for Primal Beast because no, <laughs> no. he can't. He doesn't know what agriculture is, so he's unable to <laughs> eat any he's grains not, at all. Not gone through the agricultural revolution. They've gotten rid of the ward here, actually. So alone is well, just that alone. But he's still going to be able to snipe Michael Top uh, on the high ground there with the uh, Sonic Wave. A nice stun onto Mariano means that he cannot counter initiate. So it's just a quick double kill. They smoked for that and still used a couple of ultis. Roshan mm. not up yet either. So infamous, the best they can get from this is a tier 2 tower and maybe chip damage onto a tier 3? Maybe not. I think tier 3 is a bit pushing it because you might get surprised, right? Like a fiend scape yeah. and, and attack. But the tier 2 in, in Dwell Post, for example, is great. And honestly, TP's looking very scary. And this is the kind of hero, or this is the kind of game where I would not want to be against Lumiere. Uh, if you talk about the true, the top SA carries, Lumiere definitely comes up in the conversation. But where he differentiates himself from, like, Ektor, for example, is that I think Lumiere is the most consistent one. So... I, I, he's like the Raven of SA, honestly. He, if he has a good game and he has a good draft, it's really difficult to beat him. And it's, it's going to be a, oh, a tough game now here. for Infinity. Okay. Hello, Mariano. Opening up the fight oh. on Oscar, setting up the Wukong's command around him as well, and even the Orchid to prevent the ult from coming through. Once again, he's going to take the Fiend's Gate, but he's going to be cut down for a second time. Two seconds of a channel, still long enough for Infinity to chew through the second tank hero in the game. They will also find themselves sliding for a snack, making it a two for none. We'll see how fast this Roche is, because if it's going to be a fast respawn, oh boy, does this play beautifully into the plans of Infinity. It's not. It's a long one. It's two minutes until Roshan is back. Uh, so that will buy Infamous plenty of time here to mount a defense, so long as they don't get jumpy here. Mm. Yep. Infamous. 
We'll see. Oh, sorry, Infinity Act, actually, we'll see what they do with the next 10 minutes. I think that's going to determine this game, really. They need to get some major objectives and find a way to deal with this TP. Yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. mind the close your eyes and pray TP is not there, but as we've seen from the anime, that's impossible. <laughs> he eventually comes anyway. And I don't know if this brute force strat is the best idea to deal with him. I, I yeah. honestly do wonder what their plan is going to be eventually. Like, the Heaven's Hover is a good start for Underlord. Mariano's itemization always really on point. But who's going to kill? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just for context, with DD rune, of course, this TA will slice right through it. But before it's Rises melt striked uh, a TB illusion and didn't kill it in one shot, which is like, you know, yep. that thing takes three hundred percent damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and with melt, uh, the extra damage. Yeah, it's it, again, yeah. It, 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 the difficulty comes when Scotty comes by, right? Because until now, you can avoid TB well, right Scotty's easily. Up. Yeah, exactly. That's why. That's why. He's had it for a bit. And when Scotty is up, like it's just so difficult to avoid oh. him or kite him. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. And, and now he's got on top of that. Yeah. <sighs> the the I, play style I'm... against TP is, is, is kiting him, and you can do that with any hero in the early game, but as he gets some more items, it becomes difficult. And unless you have something like a PL or Naga or these kind of illusion elusive heroes, it's really difficult to kite him in a team fight. Yeah. And they, they have a Lotus, which of course is not going to dispel an active Fiend's Grip, but it will prevent one from coming through. And it looks mm -hmm, like they were mm -hmm. thinking about perhaps throwing one down on a Lumiere. But now the, the issue for him is Lumiere... Wait, did he not buy BKB? Who, bought, Lumiere? who just bought BKB then? I thought no, it was Lumiere. No, he it must did not just have buy been, BKB. Obviously. I guess he sold what? it. He sold it and he's going for Butterfly instead. And he has okay. Butterfly now. Okay. I, I thought I was going crazy. Okay, but I mean, no, he, maybe then... Yeah, no, he is. You're right. You're uh, right. Maybe this Orchid that Michael's about to finish up is going to be a bit more impactful than I was going to give it credit. Because had that been a BKB, he would have been a very sad monkey uh, with that mm -hmm. Orchid. Because it wouldn't have done a whole lot. At least against the carry, which, again, is now the big problem in this game. Yeah, uh, no, I, I would agree with that. I feel, I feel like, unlike some other games, this is perhaps a game where Lumiere can literally 1v5 if he's got the cooldowns, right? Basically just meta. And he can literally 1v5 the enemy team. I think eventually MP deviates into items that deal with him, right? He's going for Mjolnir. And I think if you go Mjolnir MKB, yeah. MP stands a chance. I mean, not solo, right? But with the help of his no. team, I think it's possible. Obviously, in this 1v5 situation we're talking about. What I do like, though, right. is the rest right. of the right. is itemizing really correctly. You talked about the Lotus Orb. We got a Heaven's, yeah, Har he's Heaven's he's Halberd, sorry, on a loan. Uh, which, I love mm -hmm. this item. We, we in this broadcast, and I mean, we, not just Richie and I, but like the whole panel, Chris has the loan often, particularly Bowie as well, so the, uh, the SA experts, uh, that he wasn't able to play for his team many times in his old iterations of teams. We praised him for this change in Infamous, and I think this is the epitome of it. Him building Heaven Salver and the Queen of Pain, not really a good item on this hero, but just in a way acknowledging he's not the win condition and that he needs to stop the TA and the MP. Love it. It's a great item, it's a great change, and it shows the growth from alone. This kid's only 19 now, so, you know, wait, wait till he's 25. Hey, so Roche is getting started up. The problem is with, with how much split push Infinity naturally have, it's a bit difficult for them given that top and uh, bot lanes are constantly shoving in. Um, yep. And I agree with you, by the way, on that point. Just, just moving on to this next Roche fight, which I think <laughs> is basically going to decide the game. Um, so that job there, getting rid of the traps yeah. from Rises. You're probably right. You're probably right. If if uh, Infamous might just take this roach, I think the game becomes nigh impossible for Infinity. Yeah. Unless Infamous throws, which honestly always on the table. I mean, that, <laughs> and... that, that's always on the table, right? We, we, let's not forget, we're in the SA region, right? Yeah, but also Infamous is like the king of it, right? They're like, well, you played such a clean early game. Oh, what are these five minutes here? What what did I just watch now? So, you know. Uh, Weaver? There's the Yule Scepter. Monkey King is going to die immediately. So for now, good, defend, uh, good attack by Infamous. The Grip didn't do and much, so they're going to cancel by the Yule Scepter from the Queen of Pain. And now Bane is going to be decimated as the cut up to Rises, but they don't want to chase after him. Instead, they just have to go for Roche. This is a very bad start to the Roche fight. Yes, it is. But we've got the buybacks for Infinity. And if they can at least get Lumiere to waste this Metamorphosis, they'll be quite happy with it, but they do not have a Fiend's Grip here to threaten him. So now that lack of BKB, even if it was going to make a difference, certainly not going to anymore. Is Michael getting jumped yet again? He's silenced by the Sonic Boom, but does at least get off the Wukong's command. Still going to die regardless as PP making the jump in, but the counter initiation from Oscott into the cookie, nice. pushing him back into the Sonic Wave, perfectly picking up the kill onto PP. And now in trouble is Rises. Really, the only person who have really taken damage here is just, just uh, the Snapfire. They have managed to pull Lumiere back out of the pit and through the duration of meta, but still, this team does Roshan mighty fast, especially with all the minus armor that they have. 
Nice Sunder says thank you alone. You're playing for the team now. Didn't you hear? <laughs> Give me your HP. Yes, entirely. As Oscar goes in, stuns Mariano. Is the battle of Rises? the Oscillators. Rises just walks in with a big oh, no. AB, and they cover him with a pit of mouth. Rises could be in trouble because the sky is still slowing him down. Rises can run away in time. Oh, no. He can't get to the high ground. He's done for. The Queen of Pain also now in the pit to make sure nobody can feel his agent. And Oscar wins the battle of the Oscillators by killing off Mariano. The Rose will fall, and Infamous now takes the lead. Middle tower is under attack. This is looking a bit scary for Infinity. How do you recover? This was the turning point in the fight, and you had to win that Roche or the, in the game. Yeah, sorry. yeah, and and again, if if Infinity seemed a little bit desperate there to do anything in their power to at least, you know, get the Aegis away from in, in, um, Infamous, even if it involves just snatching Aegis immediately losing both lives, it, it's because they were that desperate. I mean, I, I wasn't joking when I said this Aegis is pretty much going to determine the way the rest of this game ends up. Uh, and now that it's firmly into the hands of Lumiere, and you've lost so many resources trying to prevent that from happening, things are looking mighty, mighty grim here uh, for Infinity. How are we doing on this Mjolnir? Is, is, the, is it completed already? Does PP have full Mjolnir? Uh, no, no probably not, right? Instead. Okay, that's mixed damage, ex acceptable, especially versus <laughs> the Butterfly. Did, did he complete his full Mjolnir? It looks yellow and has Monkey King ball it? on it. He just got version. it delivered, okay? <laughs> it in the inventory. I was I was trying to find his courier, couldn't find it because NT's all over on the map. So. Where's you the know, end the, of this hammer? It's just a stick. I don't understand the, the what courier, happened. The courier, whenever there's a, 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 an NP in the game, really gets to, to use his frequent flyer card. He's all over the map, you know? He, he gets to explore regions of the map he's never been to. <laughs> okay. I think MKB is better for the damage overall. I think it does deal more damage than the owner to a single target. And I don't think I don't think TP's about clearing his illusions. Yes, it's nice, right? But it's not like Nagar PL where you have to do that. Uh, it's really about killing the main hero. That's what yeah. I think Still actually Mariano's well. really good at clearing the illusions anyway, right? With Firestorm. Yeah, yeah, you have a lot of options for the illusions. So I like the MKB. Uh... Also, the MKB is a desperate item. Of we need to kill TB. Hello, oh, they found... and goodbye to Bane. Die back. Chesid, or Prada, as we like to call him, because that name is pronounceable. And we're going to go for the Ranged Rex and the Miller Rex afterwards. But there's no creeps nearby, thanks to PP's Me? cutting of lanes. Oh, no. In trouble. Alone caught up to him. But alone only has Heaven Talbert, so there's only so much you can do. And yep, the ultimate enemy of alone. TP's HP, you know, a hero in general, he can't really deal with any of those. PP there goes, oh, you're alone? Right. That's right, you're alone! And then just TP's uh, away. He was expecting more people to be there. That's the joke. It's funnier when yes. I explain it. Yes, it is. Um, I actually think to be there was questioning. It's like, well, how is this mid laner beating me? <laughs> because the the frustration of acknowledging he doesn't have as much farm as you, he doesn't have half the impact you're having, but still, they're playing for Lumiere. And that worked for Hokori, and it will certainly work for Infamous too. Yep, now, of course, with creeps uh, breaking the high ground defense, they are able to get in uh, the structure damage, so they finish off the bottom lane of Barracks and head on straight towards the mid lane. Of course, number two, they might be able to snipe here. Oh, no, uh, not oh, even. Whoa. And the cookie! <laughs> Chases him through time. This cookie's so good, it's gonna follow you into the pass. <laughs> oh my god. That was actually a great cookie. Did he time it on purpose to get the stun? Because he wasn't gonna get it otherwise. That was. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> There's a the Sunder. Alone was nearby, but he decided to spare his teammate and instead take the TA's life. And that's gonna be a second lane of racks down. Could be tier fours, honestly. I mean, be tier fours. They they can't get megas because uh, of the tier two still standing top lane. As PP once again simply just TPs away. This time with BKB active in case anyone else was here who could cancel choice. TP. There, there wasn't, but I agree. Oh, there was. Good alone at Yules. Oh, that's a very good point. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, he didn't Yules him first this time. That's right. This is the. This is the only option that Infinity, Infinity has left to them, right? Just split push as much as you can, and. Pray the enemy team makes a mistake, honestly. Uh, it's difficult because your lineup is not completely... Like, this is not an Alliance guy lineup, right? Your lineup only has two heroes, realistically. If you can't underload, that can split push effectively. Honestly, just one. Uh, I guess if TA buys Ags now, maybe they change their plan. But we're already against the ropes. I don't think if Infamous is going to give him enough time yeah. for the TA to buy and, Ags. And Ags is, at most, it's a buys-you-time kind of item. And what is a buy-you-time for this game is... I don't really know. Problem. Like, uh, all, all the split push in the world is, is amazing, but at its core, what it is going to force enemies to do is just walk a creep wave to structures, and then what? 
You know, that's, that's all it does. This team is more than willing to do this because they know you can't fight them 5v5, especially while this Aegis still has a little bit of air on it, and it does. It's going to be uh, reclaimed here in 30 seconds. Sorry, make that 20 seconds. Uh, so it doesn't seem like they'll be able to use it for this push, but, you know, they have managed to kill TB once this game. I mean, what do you suspect? Is Lumiere going to finish this game deathless? That is the Lumiere special, honestly. Yeah. Again, he's yeah. the most consistent carry, dude. Like, if this was a game with Hector, I'd be like, look, anything is up in the air. Hector could decide to farm a small camp and die as a result. Like, you don't know. But with Lumiere, uh, this guy's really consistent. When when you give him a good game, I, I, I think it's it's really difficult to wait for him to make a mistake. We do joke about the infamous uh, throw sometimes, and they have made it, but usually it's in closer games. It's not in games where they're, like, this <laughs> far above, and it's an easy yeah. game for them. I mean, a 10k net worth lead does not really do justice to, to how big no, this TB no. is. Like, it, not at all. Like, sure, the no. NP is farmed because he presses R and farms half the visible map. Uh, so he might just be on affliction. Nope, he's going to get spooked into TP in a way, which is the right move because look at his damage. Oh my, my God. goodness. That wasn't even Demon Zeal, that was just Swift Link. <laughs> oh my God, not even Metamorphosis, that was just normal <laughs> damage. Oh Lord. All right, well. Yeah, I mean, PP. He's close to getting the removed teleportation cooldown, but I think at this point you might want to go for uh, just so you can split push more effectively. So maybe that's going to change a little bit for them as they can deep push towers better. And they go for smoke. This could be a good smoke as they find a lone first or a lone actually blocks the smoke here. We go for the snap fire instead. Good four snap of her. She has green. Covers herself with a scatter blast. Slavin creating space for the team as a cookie to the low ground. And Slavin. He oh, just oh no. re retreats. Now Lumiere's Prem is here. dead, Reese's or Rise Rise could be in trouble. There's the BKB, He's... that's not going to help him against the Scotty, and the Invincibility doesn't help either. Yep, it's a gem. Oh no. Okay, well PP is immediately doing whatever he can, which is right now split push bottom, uh, but the barracks have been taken. I watched so TI3! Gonna... He's going to bring the boys to mid lane. <laughs> yes, indeed, he did watch TI3. Unfortunately, he doesn't get plus six treants on the 25 talents. He might actually have wanted that. Just kidding, of course. The TP no cooldown is still going to be superior. Okay, it's it's a base race. It's a base race, uh, but I don't think they're going to be winning this one, Avo. Yeah, TP versus NP, who pushes fast and Mariano's trying his best to make this base race a bit more even. Uh, Mariano, they're not going to ignore him. He's just a punching bag, and they just don't need to punch the punching bag. That's what they're going to do. Go directly for the throne. Okay, the glyph gives him a couple more seconds, but the team, the NP still at tier fours. This is not going to work yeah. well. Infamous yeah, and there this. goes the fortify. <laughs> yeah. All right, Man, so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the uh, only option they had, right? I think fine. Agreed. Like, you 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 kind of lost that game on the road. We mentioned it. It was just a draft that was meant to work in a snowball fashion for Infinity, and they did a good job in the early. But that Roche, I don't know if you can call it a mistake necessarily. There was a little bit of a misplay by the supports there, dying in the beginning. Then the team fight was just really good for Infamous. But overall, Infamous just played better than Infinity, I'd say. Um, and that Roche fight was just the epitome of it. Agreed. Agreed, and, and I also don't think, like, for a lineup that really relied this heavily on that kind of window, which, of course, these days is, is all, if not about second Roche, definitely about taking a huge fight and then winning the game during that window, which usually Ace yep. allows you to do. They didn't yep. really have the best, like, Roche control, Roche setup, if that makes sense. You didn't have, like, a Veno, you didn't have, like, even, like, an ET, for example. Like, someone to give you this Roche vision and, and kind of deny enemies from doing it under you. Because sure. we saw, at some point, Infamous just walk in and then they're like we're doing roche what are you going to do about it and then infinity <laughs> yep. just have to throw bodies in there to try and delay it right like that that was their best solution uh, you know screw the tb the tb was definitely still going to be the problem late game but what was stopping any kind of lineup from just walking in and doing roche versus infinity almost nothing you're right. Like, like, I think that's where Underlord fails a bit, right? I think that's where yep. Lacoste's point's going to come through. If you have a Centaur or literally anything with an area stun, hell, a Slardar would do better. At least you initiate on a stun. But they, they pit a Malice, and you're like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, it's annoying to fight in it, but once you have enough items and enough tank ability, pit of Malice is not that much of a nuisance, right? So, I know the TB last pick kind of destroyed them. You're right about the Roche pick, but I also feel like the TB was just kind of impossible. And the Peekaboo game they played with him was like, I, TB doesn't exist, TB doesn't exist. This is not the Babadook. Uh, TB does exist, and he will he will kill you. So, yeah. And you're building, That's as we saw. He easily winning the base race towards the end, which we're not criticizing because what else were they supposed to do? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And with that, I think we <laughs> I think we can throw it back to our panel and see what they have to say about this game. So uh, take it away. I have a plus. Thank you, Avo. Uh, so we go back <laughs> to the panel. You guys were...
I'm on point with your predictions, uh, really. I think I want to congratulate you, Bowie, because you know usually your your percentages are way off. I don't really know where they come from, but that 30 minute prediction was so on point. Literally 30 minutes when that second rush happens, and that's when they lost the game. So, uh, what 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 do you think they need to t- change? Is just a draft issue for next game? I really think it's a draft issue. Like I think winning with Underlord is like asking someone to cook us. A- Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I really think it was a draft problem. Uh, I think trying to win with Underlord is like trying to cook a steak with a hot pocket and an iPhone. I, I really feel like they did a really good job considering like they, they, they actually had a chance of winning that game if they get second Roche. Unfortunately, I think their macro game, especially in, in that scenario, was pretty bad. Uh, I, I think they like I, I honestly was very impressed. Consider All things considered, Underlord considered, they they played really well. Uh, I know Infamous played better, but the the Terrorblade is just pretty much a checkmate, and it was not even a last pick, uh, you know, twenty fourth pick. So hmm. nicely done by Infamous. Yeah, I mean Underlord, what a huge sack of uselessness this hero is. <laughs> it's just like the, actually doesn't do anything. I I mean they had a bit of an opportunity. I would say like they needed to play fast the uh, first uh, 15, 20 minutes, get some kind of advantage. They were always staying ahead uh, up to up to 5k uh considering the heroes that they had but they never really threatened terrorblade and terrorblade was supposed to be the king of this game they didn't address the terrorblade in the draft like the last pick was underlord one of the heroes that like is already slowed that can easily get kited and then you get scotty you get reflection on top of him like we've seen in the end uh underlord just standing there People ignore him. All the heroes just stopped attacking him for a reason because there's literally nothing you're supposed to be afraid of. Uh, I want to touch upon like Alone Screen of Pain. Had a really rough time. I also had a joke prepared with the Alone, but uh, Seek and Strike already told one, so I I, I don't have anything. And um, I I want to mention the itemization. I think this is the key. Uh, it's very easy to itemize against the two two heroes who kind of do the same thing. Nature's Prophet has a bit of a magical damage coming up from the ulti, but uh, that's very, like, the numbers are very low. Uh, so you can itemize pretty easily against two cores that just deal straight up physical damage. I want to mention the Centaur, who, like, it's very, like, you see what you're going to play against, and I think as a Centaur, you already know the items you're going to go for. It's going to be Vanguard, Blink, uh, uh, like, you get a casual play mail, you counter both of these, you get a Lotus Orb later to deal with the Silence coming up from the Nature's Prophet, and then uh, he built, built a Crimson Guard, which I really like. It was a bit of late, but still a great item against what they're playing mm-hmm. against, and then Queen of Pain, Heaven's Halberd Queen of Pain, he already had a rough time, but uh, getting that item is just top tier because you counter both of them. Like you get a bit of a evasion and you get a disarm on top of that. Uh, also TB for him, he builds in a butterfly, I believe it was a third or fourth item. And then yes. you're forcing both of them to get like MKB or try to go for something that they don't want to play. Yeah, uh, love that breakdown, and we're going to touch more upon the draft as we get into the second draft of the game. Before we get into game two between Infinity and Infamous, we're going to take a small break. We'll be back with the pre-panel segment. Stay tuned for more SA Dota. <laughs> 